Hi, I'm Braden Bales, and you're watching Hollywire. Hey, Hollywire! We have Braden Bales in the studio today. Hello. Hey, Braden. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Let's play a little game. Let's do it. Because I want people to get to know you Me best too. we can. So we're going to do Hollywire first. Sweet. <laughs> okay. So the first time you went on a real date. 10th grade, um, took this girl from my high school to bur a little burger wrap, like night, like step up from like, not like McDonald's or step something Step up like from that. McDonald's. Yeah, like a fancy, a fancy like, <laughs> I wouldn't say steakhouse, but it's it's a very it's a very specific restaurant. Mm -hmm. Had the meal, you know, went great. Was very ner nervous about how I was eating because I'm a very messy eater. Oh. So that's a little, a little a little inside info. Is I was very much overthinking how I was um, eating the whole time, and then yeah, that's pretty much it. Not not Tenth very grade. remarkable. Tenth, Tenth grade. grade. This one's a little more emotional. Age of your first heartbreak. Also grade ten. Same girl. What? Craziness. Yeah. Was it the eating? I'm just kidding. It was not, no. <laughs> First time you said, I love you. Um, I've never said it. And I've had it said to me. I've never said it to somebody. That sounds bad. So I'll explain a little bit. It was, I've never said that I love you, but I feel like it's because I've genuinely never loved somebody okay. like that. Like I've said it to like my family and to like people that I love, but romantically, um, I've never said it. And it's just because I feel like when you say it before you fully know that you mean it, I feel like it makes it cheaper for all of the next times that you would say it. Mm -hmm. So for me in my relationship where it was said to me, I, I just, I felt very strongly about this person, but I didn't fully f feel that yet. And I wasn't 100% sure. So I felt like it would mean way more to both of us if I waited to say it until I felt that. And I never felt that. Okay. Uh, first time you got recognized in public. Yes. So that was right before Chronic Cautious dropped. I was in forget where it was, but I was in Nashville at a sandwich shop. And okay. I went inside to grab my sandwich because it was ready. And a guy just looked at me and went, chronically cautious? And I was like, yeah, dude, like, what's up? And then we like <laughs> dapped up and like spoke for like five minutes. And it was like a crazy feeling. I don't think I'll ever forget that. Aww. But it was like that first, that first feeling was great. Um, and then I actually ran into him at a bar like a couple weeks later and was like, yo, that was like the first time that ever happened to me. And like, thank you so much for that. So it was a really full circle moment oh when I got God. to see him again. But yeah, that was the first time and I will never forget it. Wow, yeah. okay. You do have a lot to celebrate. Your EP just came out. Yes, it did. Very exciting. Super pumped. How does it feel to have like worked on something for so long and now have it out in the world? It feels like, it just feels really good. Like I feel like for a while I was, I dropped Chronic Cautions. That's all anybody saw of me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like having the EP out just shows everything that I was thinking while that whole moment was happening where I felt kind of not invisible. I just felt like people knew the me from then, and now I feel like they know the me from the past a little bit. Right. And I, I love that, to be honest. Like, it's just cool to feel understood. You get to share more of yourself. Way more of myself. And, and just how it felt while it was going crazy, you know? Yeah. I mean, let's actually, let's dive into that. Yeah. Because going crazy is almost not dramatic enough. It really went insane. It popped yeah. off. How did that, like, moment when it first popped off? Feel. It felt great. So it just, I posted it for the first time and it started going nuts on TikTok. Yeah. Um, likes to views ratio was crazy. Like I knew that this was like a special song and that first half an hour felt incredible. I went on a walk. It was like this whole euphoric full body experience. <laughs> so good. And then after that, as it kept getting bigger and bigger, it's like past a certain point, it just stopped getting cooler. Okay. Which was interesting. So that, that was like, that's kind of what the, what the EP is about too. And, and I feel like that feeling comes through of like, this isn't actually how I thought it would be, where right right away it was, mm -hmm. and then it really quickly wasn't. And that was very confusing. I think what's so interesting about the age of like being viral, right? Yeah. You go from like having an idea and you know sharing it with the people closest to you and just kind of putting it out there to like being perceived. Like yes. everyone is very aware of you. And yes. like people you haven't even heard of are singing along to your song. And it's gotta be kind of daunting. It's daunting, but it's I love it. Honestly, like I, I enjoy being perceived. I've, I'm the youngest of four. Okay. And because of that, I feel like I've always been a little bit of an, of an attention seeker. Okay. You know? And that's so, a younger child trait. It's a younger child trait, and I love the attention that came with everything happening. And that, that's great. Um, obviously, I make music to be heard by people. And so having people hear it was great. And I feel like whenever I would 
feel that human connection of somebody really connecting to what I've done. It felt amazing. Yeah. But the, the part that I feel like was the most daunting is just like the numbers on the screen. It feels very different than a human connection. It feels yeah. almost like a video game when it's happening. And then I feel like the only moments that I really connected with was when I would see somebody in person or somebody would send me a like, comment like, yeah. this, I love this song because it helped me through this and this and this. That felt really good. But just the numbers aspect of it was a little bit daunting. Yeah, I can imagine that. Talk to me about when you were writing this music, obviously I'm assuming it was inspired by what you were going through, what yeah. people around you were going through. So how long did it take for you to like put this album, bring it to life? It's it, honestly, it took, if you count up all the time, probably like a couple weeks of total oh, work. Oh wow! Yeah, so I wrote all of those songs after Chronic and Cautious. The songs are like 90% done when I leave the studio. So I'll show up with no nothing in my mind, no like idea even of the song. Okay. I'll hear the instrumental, I'll write a song, and I leave the studio and the song's 90% done. So most of the EP was done in like, in like probably 15 hours of work. And then the longest part is like taking what's there and refining it and like making right. sure that it's polished and ready to drop. And I personally mix and mastered every song on the EP except for the ones that came out before. So ROI, Fair With The Friends and the new Chronic Cautious were mixed and mastered by me. So that part took a while. That's but crazy. Yeah, yeah, in total it's, it's just, I feel like my collections of music aren't as put together as some other people's are, mm. where I will show up one day with how I'm feeling that day and I'll write a song about that moment that I'm in and then it's easy to pick the ones that I've done and put them together into a collection, yeah. but I don't write with the collection in mind. You're not writing with like an overarching like vision era, like yeah. you're going like, this is how I'm feeling, let's yeah. communicate it. Well, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for having me, this, this was very is good. This so fun. Yes, this was very fun. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. You guys, you have been watching Hollywire and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.